Okay, so hey, I'm with the system. I wrote a quick review of Fujimi Fantasia uh, collab that's rerunning starting tomorrow, uh, April 26th, 2021. I don't think it's necessarily as strong as the first run, but I think the second run is still strong and you should maybe consider at least rolling a few times in it. And it, there are some critical cards for some team builds that you definitely want if you're a more heavy spender than normal. So again, this is my review. My opinions are going to play heavily into it. I tend to rate cards that are fun higher, even though they're not necessarily meta, because not everything I play is going to be Alt Shura 2 or Shura 3 when it comes out. So take my tier list with a grain of salt. That's how I feel about the cards. Of course, a lot of people are going to vote, for example, Naga much higher, but that's where I kind of put Naga. I put her as an A. I put Lena Inverse, Sosuke, the new Testarossa, and the new Orb Skin up in the S tier because they're all really fun, they're all really powerful, and I really, really want Sosuke. So maybe me putting up an S tier, I might roll him. Should you roll? As an absolute whale, what am I going to tell you to do? You're probably going to roll anyway. So yes, at least roll till you get Sosuke Sagra, right? Uh, leader swap teams are very strong right now, and he, even though... There's been plenty of time since Fujimi last ran. He's still the strongest leader swap assist equip by far. Uh, he's got cloud resist and double blind. We'll talk about him a little bit later. But yeah, that's what you're really going for. The Lena inverse is also very strong. Still, ribbon resist, skill boost, two turns haste. Very unique. Um, and... Really, all the seven stars that you're going to whale for are going to be good, except maybe with an exception of Cheatery. She didn't get enough love, I don't think, and her assist equip is just completely outclassed by Red Shilling Forward. If you're less whale, do you play Leader Swap? Do you like playing Leader Swap? If yes, you might want to roll for Vaught and Takoon, but you don't necessarily want to break the bank. Uh, I would get the bundles because you might get your Sosuke Sagara right off the bat from the bundle, and so you could save yourself a bunch of stones. Everyone else, um, you can't get anything if you don't roll. So you just completely miss out on some completely like interesting and unique cards. So I suggest maybe throwing a few rolls. And uh, maybe you'll get lucky. But if you don't roll at all, you definitely won't get anything. A good way to judge whether you should roll or not is based off of what gold eggs you might get. If you've rolled in the past, the gold eggs aren't going to do much good for you. But if you haven't rolled ever, Zelos is unique. And good to have at least one copy of. He provides a very unique quad color board with quad color Skyfall, which is used for uh, ranking cheesing, Skyfall cheesing. Uh, it's kind of a miserable way to play ranking, but sometimes it's the only way to get the crown. And if you don't have any of those actives at all, then you're going to be out of luck. And this is the only gold egg that has a similar active. All the other ones are premium like diamond eggs from other collabs. Melissa Mal is now a very viable cleric for new players. She has some problems that she doesn't provide enough utility um, but in her awakenings, but I think she's pretty strong now, and if you're a new player, you wouldn't be sad to have a card like Melissa Mal. And then Zelgadis is not very good, but he's at least useful for some swipe kills. He's actually a good card for doing some swipe kills on Hoppo Descended, which also starts the same day as Fujimi. So, you know, it makes a green and a dark column and gives you 4x attack or 5x attack for wood. And bam, swipe. Big damage. If you rolled heavily the first run, there's no new gold eggs. So, realistically, most of the things that you roll are going to be gold eggs. So, that you might want to skip this entirely. Or maybe just buy the bundles and move on. Um, it's sad that the only tradables are Lena and Naga. If you're, if you're looking into Naga and you're really into big blue teams naga's great so maybe consider just trading for naga and moving on should i buy xxxxx bundle two dollars why not i think everybody should buy the two dollar bundles if you have the means to pay for them you should buy them they support gung-ho if you're playing the game you obviously like it whether you like it or love it or love to hate it or hate to love it you should spend two dollars and support the company that makes the game so Seven star plus, yes for whales. Obviously, you're you're not. Most of the whales aren't even reading this guide. They've already bought the seven star bundle. <laughs> uh, the worst card you're going to get is cheatery, in my opinion, but she's still pretty fun. So 
like there's a lot of fun in this collab and may, maybe it's not super meta but i think the cards are are fun and i think you everyone needs to in, remember that it's a game and you should be having fun so unique and different leaders are a uh, high appeal to me personally Orbskin one if you bought it last time then you have it and you probably don't need to buy it again but if you don't have it, if you ever do farming or run gravity cheese, for example, like Vidar Descended, where you do big gravities, or any of the descends that have a 50% super resolve, Amelia is easily the best low percent gravity, pairing with Zeus and Hera to combine total of a total um, of 50% gravity to knock off those really annoying super resolves. So she rocks four skill boosts, and now she gives you a 2.5 damage amp on light, which basically makes everything she was already good at much, much better. So because she has a fairly low cooldown, I think at eight turns, you can use her early in the dungeon with an assist equip, and then you can re-haste her up by the end of the dungeon, use your Zeus and Hera, knock off a 45%, then use her to knock off the other 5%, get the big 2.5 damage amp spike, Swipe your light board that you made with Selene or Zeus Giga and get the kill. Make some really easy and fun farming builds with Amelia. And I've used her several times since Fujimi. I do not regret buying that orb skin at all. I think it was quite good. Constance. Yes, yes, and yes. All three forms of Constance are good. It's a solid buy for anyone, even the low in-app purchasers. Constance is very good. It's a green horse type card. And yes, we are getting buffs to all the Draco Bladers, including Celica, which Celica will have a two-turn unlock as well. But even then, you know, her uh, her assist equip is quite good. So you're not going to miss out. And they are very different cards. So Constance is a very strong investment. All right, so uh, I'm going to go through the diamond cards. I'm not going to go through the gold cards. I think I've talked about them enough a little bit in like what you can expect. I maybe I again forgot to mention Magic Lynn. Perfect 15 by 15 light dark board. Obviously good for what it is, but there are other 15 by 15 solutions now where Magic Lynn was the first. So he's less valuable now. All right, Lena Inverse. Um, in my guide that I'll post with the video, I have a quick little synopsis of each character, kind of what I feel about them in just one to two sentences. And for Lena Interverse, she got a little bit better at what she was already great at. New Yuvo has a great but hungry leader skill. Um, her Demon's Blood Talismans, as far as I know, got zero buff. No changes, but it's still amazing. And uh, it's one of two assist equips that provide one skill boost and two skill haste, giving you a total of three effective skill boosts on a single assist equip. It also has an attack buff and RCV buff, so it it's relevant. Even if it's off color and you're not running red, it'll still overwrite attack and RCV debuffs, so it's still useful. So, uh, Lena Inverse's base is huge on killing dragons as long as they're not VDP. Now she's worth a little bit less because there is a farmable in the Haku story mode that does something similar for darks, but she still has the highest. She has 486x personal multiplier against dragons with her 7 CSA, and she packs a 4,000 attack. I mean, she's just the dragon killer supreme. Uh, in her Uvo 1, great devil killer with VDP, um, her buff that they add to her, she's now four skill boost. But the biggest thing that holds Lena Inverse back is her active. So Lena Inverse gives you plus combo and she gives you a perfect 15 by 15 red dark board. Yeah, that sounds good. But in all end game that we're doing now, um, a board without hearts basically is suicide. So you need hearts on like every board because you're just getting punched over and over again for these giant hits of damage. So if you don't have a way to heal each turn, so a lot of times, even with a good leader skill and shield, you're going to die if you don't heal every turn. So that's the biggest problem with her active skill. Still good. And for farming content, um, she's going to be good at killing dragons. She's going to be good at killing devils. Now, her new Yuvo that they just added is the same flavor as her first Yuvo, but for dragons. So back to the dragons. Except now, it has VDP. And her active has changed, and it's quite better, in my opinion, unless you're looking for those perfect 10C boards. Her new active gives you nine orbs, it gives you a damage amp, and gives you a board unlock. So the nine orbs, what's that mean? That means it's a guaranteed VDP. So that's why that's good. 
Uh, her leader skill is a 4 404 with a 43.75% shield and 10 million auto fuwa. Uh, and you get the shield for just a four match of reds. So damage control and stalling is quite easy. But to, in order to completely activate your leader skill, you have to do a four match of reds and two red combos. Pretty orb hungry. So seven red orbs minimum. And so naturally, if you're already doing a VDP, VDP 2C, yeah, you're good. You're good to go. And she's pretty dang good at stalling because you just match four reds. Unfortunately, the orbs you're trying to save for are the orbs that you're matching for the shield. But she can stall. So that's pretty cool. Um, I think this is a very viable leader. Uh, I think there's a lot of systems out there that make orb hungry leaders pretty viable. So I think I, I, I like her Uvo quite a bit and I have three of these. So I'll definitely be making one of the new Uvos. Uh, we already spoke about the assist, still one of the best assists of the game. I've used it on dozens of teams and people who don't have this assist, I think miss out a lot. All right. So we got our new Naga, the serpent. This is not to be confused with the farmable Naga, the serpent. Uh, they've done this a few times in the past where a farmable card will then get a rem card. I think they did it with Sword Art Online. And for some people, it's really confusing. So, yes, this is a rem version of Naga the Serpent. It is at the same rarity level as Lena Inverse, meaning you can actually trade for this card, meaning there are now two tradables in the Fujimi collab. And um, my general synopsis is, oh, 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 all three forms are fun and useful. Anime laugh. Uh, some of some people think that like this card is like extremely meta. I think uh, we might be missing some cards in North America that make this card as powerful as it could be. The base has a great active. It's a long-term shield similar to Lakshmi from like Gung Ho Collab. And long-term shields in dungeons that have continuous gigantic hits are really good. It has a very good uptime. And good awakenings and fits immediately onto all current blue meta teams like Hitagi, for example. And as a leader, could possibly be an improvement over Suraga as a Hatagi pair. And she pair pairs really well with her own Yuvo. And that's a really fun thing, right? Um, the Yuvo and the base actually pair quite well together. And so that means someone new to the uh, game, if they actually get lucky or if they want to re-roll until they get to Naga the Serpents, they have a blue, a good blue team right off the bat. And if they get lucky and get a Cheatery, Cheatery can go on the team with them. So there's, there's lots of blue fun to be had if you're... Just like if you're trying to force a new account with this collab. And we get 109 stones tomorrow. So there's a there's a stone incentive to possibly re-roll new accounts as well. So if you're thinking about an alt, maybe this is an okay time to create an alt. Get your 109 stones, roll till you get like Naga, to double Naga or something useful and good. And then wait for a god fest and go crazy. The Yuvo is a great Fujin active that also buffs damage and overwrites time, though it is a minus 50% time debuff for two turns. So be ready to hey, deal get with out that. Of my hardware. Get it. What are you doing? Wet the system. What? Thanks, like water, water hitting the ground, sinking it in. Oh and uh, her leader skill is good, but you may struggle to heal because it's a 2.5 HP leader skill and no RCV. So, but blue is notorious for having lots of good ways to heal or having leads with high shields so sometimes the healing's not as necessary so i don't really think that's going to hold her back this uh the yuvo is a great card the assist equip is fantastic uh utility damage hp attributes orb swipe farming potential from making the five blues on the left five hearts on the right super useful i'm sure it'll get some use so even if you don't like her base or her yuvo i think you'll get use out of the assist equip is she worth trading for i don't think so She's very expensive to trade for, and I don't think she is going to push your blue team any farther than it already is, possibly. And definitely not worth all the seven stars that you'd be trading for her. But I think she's quite good, and I'm sure people are going to trade for her because she's waifu. All right, Konami Cheatery. This card is... My synopsis of Konami Cheatery is she's not red chilling forward. So I think her main appeal is a skill boost assist equip that has a delay, but it's one turn less than Shilling Forward. And um, she got mainly marginal buffs, none of them that really help her. If you look, her Yuvo has an embarrassing 225x multiplier on her attack. Unless I missed something. 
I might have looked at the wrong version because I know there was some buffs mid version. I was looking at the pad product site, but I don't think they buffed her attack anymore. 225 is not good. And even if they buffed it a little bit, if it's not up to like the 400 snuff, you're not going to do very well as blue because blue struggles in a lot of the new dungeons because every there's so many important floors that are green. And so you deal half damage to everything. You can't even clear the second floor of Alt Shura with a damage cap blue card. You have to have you have to either bring some kind of auto follow up attack, or you have to bring a defense break. So the assist got a marginal buff from the last run. It got an extra twenty percent blind and one turn off cooldown. So I think it is less cooldown than red shelling forward, but it does. It's just it's just a worse red shelling forward. So if you have red shelling forward, you definitely don't care for this doesn't matter and her base and uvo are they're lackluster um her base is maybe a viable leader it's got four times hp it's got a shield it's got good damage it's got an auto fua but has no rcv so you're gonna have to br bring some kind of rcv fix because a four times hp 43.745 percent shield is not going to survive in new endgame dungeons all right, Gory Gabriev. I love this card. I used this card a ton when it came out. Um, this card was the king of devil killers when AA3 was a thing, and most of the floors that you really cared about were devils. So, Yuvo is a great rainbow leader, but the rainbow be rainbow, and rainbow be rainbow be rainbow, and you just got to deal with dealing less damage overall unless you choose a color focus. Still a good card, though. My... Judgment on his base form is just evolve him. And his Yuvo, decent active, considering his best uses are light teams and light-based rainbow teams. Amazing awakenings that absolutely slams devils. And the new leader skill is very strong at 4, 576-4. And uh, I think that's supposed to be a 43.75. I might have did my math wrong there because I think it's a 25-25 shield. He's a great pairing for Fasca. He's got an eight turn cooldown. That means with Bontacoon equipped, he would be a 26 turn cooldown to do a lead swap with Fasca. Personally, I'm very excited to play this card. I think this is going to be a really fun card to do with a Fasca pair. And those multipliers are pretty obscene. So assist, meh. It was meh on the first run. It's a niche laser. The only reason it was really good the first run was because I think it was the first follow-up attack equipped that North America got. Yeah, so I have two of them, so I actually made the assist equip, but I never use it. And it, and I remember distinctly having times where the active would come up, and I'd just be like, "Well, that sucks. Not can this is garbage now." All right, Clayom is one of the cards I didn't get, so um, I haven't used her much, but she's used with light row farming, and she's got a very low cooldown to create a row of light rows, three three turns. So that's what she's used for. She got pretty much zero love this run, and it shows. So she's still good as a light row farming tool, but that's it. Um, her assist is a whale, whale, whale farming assist. It's a one active that gives you a spike and two turns worth of rows because it makes a row at the top, row at the bottom. You break one row, get your light row, repair the row at the bottom next floor, move on. But yeah, uh, this card got like no love, probably because it's already really good and it's good at the thing it was good at. Orphan. So Orphan got a new Revo, and he got a lot of stuff. Um, he's a strong suicide team card, but um, I think his Revo is mediocre. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, I've got a lot to say about this card, but in general, I'm not very excited about him. You can read, you can read through it. I'm not going to read through all of it. Uh, I wrote a bunch of words for him, uh, and if you're a fan of the series, he's fun and he's viable, but he's got issues and he didn't get as much love as he should have. I think his Revo is probably a pretty good um, sub, but he's got a 22 turn cooldown. It's a 25% gravity with a bicolor dark and hearts board. Uh, I think this is going to see more like of the shorter dungeons, right? Where you use the one active and it's done. Because I could see doing a gravity and another gravity to knock off a super resolve. And then you've got that nice board. But a 22 turn cooldown on a sub that you're going to be expecting to do work inside of a long term dungeon isn't isn't good. It's yikes. Like almost every uh, card that's going to be meta is going to have like an 8 turn cooldown or less, right? 
22 turns is forever. Also, gravities aren't terribly useful in meta, like, right? Um, there's very few dungeons where we're like, yeah, we want a 25% a gravity. So this is going to be for farming. So it's good for that. Definitely good for that. All right. If I missed something out on on, on uh, Orphan, though, let me know. Because I didn't see anything very particular that would make me want him. I have one, and he's been an assist equip for forever. The assist equip is mediocre, too. Barely ever get to use it. It, it got a small buff. It's 20% poison resist. And it's a dark, dark skyfall buff. It's one of those 99 turn ones. But the problem is, is there are a lot of dungeons, a lot of floors that overwrite the skyfall buff. So it's almost better to have a shorter term skyfall buff that you can reapply often. All right. Sosuke Sagara, a.k.a. the bear. Bontakun. The reason people are probably going to roll this collab. Bontakun is the assist equip. And it provides a 18 turn cooldown leader swap and it's got cloud resist and it's awesome it's got 40 percent blind as well so it covers a lot of bases really quickly and i don't think it got buffed at all right and so people are going to be rolling for an assist equip that didn't get buffed this time around that's how powerful this card was the first time it ran all the other forms of sosuke are mediocre like, they're fun. They're playable. Um, it's one of the few Rainbow Cross leaders. But, man, Bontacoon is so cool. And the other assist equip's quite good, too. It's it's another entry of the triple H team HPs. So, all right. Base. Surprising, uh, surprisingly useful active because delays are currently very strong. However, his base form is a greater than 80% HP stack um, sub. So not useful in any type of end game, but really good in ranking and swipe because he's got a very high personal damage with absolutely no condition as long as you're above 80% health. So you're looking at like 11, almost 11.5 X personal damage for nothing. Or if you match a VDP and you got the VDP essay, 19 X personal damage. That's great for ranking. Now his active skill is much better on his Uvo because it does a, um, a one turn delay and it makes darks on an eight turn cooldown. That's actually quite good. Uh, and I, I could see using an eight turn cooldown, um, one turn delay in stuff like Alt Shura because sometimes the only thing you need to survive a floor is a one turn delay. You know, you knock off the super resolve, you avoid the giant hit, and you get to move along because you delayed them and you completely avoid the hits because they're super, you didn't have to deal with that super resolve mechanic, right? So, and it's on eight turn cooldown and it makes the dark orbs to make sure that you get a kill board. Pretty good. And his uh, awakenings are quite good in his UVO one form. Three seven C's with access to a, a, VD, a VDP essay. Now, one thing that really holds Sosuke Sagra back is that his UVO one and his new um, Revo could be really good leader skills. And they are really good leader skills on paper, except they're machine only. And I can't think of a single viable team I've ever seen ever that is specifically machines that might be one of the most slept on uh not slept on just unloved uh typings in in puzzle and dragon I mean mainly we just kill them right because they're insura so we bring lots of machine killers and kill them we don't really play them as often yeah sometimes things have the machine type but uh that's the thing that holds that leader skill back um Uvo 2 Really weird, bizarre art. I was like, WTF, the first time I saw his art. I think the active is mediocre. It's a rainbow cross leader that's limited to attackers if you want HP. But he's unique in that he's rainbow cross. So if you enjoy crosses, this is a great leader skill. Uh, they buffed him to have a skill haste awakening, which makes his active better if it makes rainbow boards. So... It's much more respectable when you're actually charging two turns every turn. So you're doing some kind of seven by six rainbow cross leader board and he charges up much faster. And so four skill boosts now too makes him a decent rainbow sub because he's got that skill charge and he's got four skill boosts. So come in pretty powerful. Revo one. This is the new one. He's got a two turn delay with a two turn attribute absorb void and remove locks. And it's on a 12 turn cooldown. Now, I said that you kind of want things to be on like an 8-ish turn cooldown, but 12 is okay too. And you might say, why would I ever want to do a turn, two-turn delay and a two-turn attribute absorb on the same active? You don't think of it like that. You think of it like when Shura 2, when you're team building, 
everyone who's team building for sure too is like, how do I fit this active into my team? Actives are at a huge premium in Altshura too. So sometimes if you can sacrifice a little bit of cooldown to actually have that active be on the same card, because there are places to stall in Shura too, you can actually save some team slots by having them both. So this card can be used early in the dungeon to do some critical delays, and then later in the dungeon for Ganesha and Shirius. I think the active is fantastic, specifically for Shura too. It almost seems tuned for Shura too. Like I said, it seems awkward, but stacked actives are actually very strong for Shura too. Potentially a very strong leader, but has kind of a low um, attack skill. But limited to machine type only, sad. That's all I have to say about it. When something says limited to machine type, sad. Look at this leader skill. Yes, the attack stat's a little low, but 75% shield plus 6 combo plus 4 seconds. It's stacked, but machine type only. So... Hard pass. Assist 1, that's what everyone's rolling for. We already talked about the legendary Bontacoon. Assist 2, triple team HP. 40% blind as a bonus. Great card. Um, it provides uh, damage absorb void and attribute absorb void with a 5x dark damage amp. So you'll really, really kill Sirius. But really, this assist equip seems tuned for Shura 1. Yeah, Shura 1's a little bit old hat, but not for everybody. And this is a great equip to get the kill floor on, you know, G Manoa. You know, you knock her down to her 50% super resolve and you really want to kill her right then. So you activate this, you get your 5x dark uh, damage amp and you void her attribute absorb and her damage absorb void with a single active. Quite good. Now, if I only had one, I'd probably leave him as Bontacoon, but he gives you options. It's a, I think it's a good assist equip. Also, triple team HP is great. New card, Leonard Testarossa. This is one of the ones I'm most excited about. Great base and Uvo, possibly held back by potential longevity due to a mediocre assist Evo. So I really enjoy both of his base and his Uvo, but his assist Evo is kind of meh. And you can kind of see that I'm pretty excited about this base because of how much I wrote about it. Great away to Kings for um, utility and personal damage. You could bump him up to five skill boosts, or you could develop his personal damage by varying which super awakenings he has active to. His active is very strong, and it's self-systemable. This is a 10-turn cooldown, 10 turns dark skyfall for 15%. That is a ludicrous amount of dark orbs. Absolutely ludicrous amount of dark orbs. And since it's on a 10-turn cooldown, if you get overwritten by some other floor... You know, you only have a handful of turns before you can reapply it. Also, it's already quite good, but it also has the effect of giving you one spinner for one turn. So it can fix problems. You can use it to fix your board on a given turn. So if you don't have enough dark orbs that turn, you got a spinner to try to swipe some dark orbs out. It also gets rid of much worse spinner combos, right? Um, for example, Roshana had six spinners in a corner across the center of the board. And you could use this, it'd give you Dark Skyfall, and get rid of all those spinners, and you get to move along. So, uh, I think this is a pretty great active. It's quite significant um, Skyfall buff at 15%. Uh, this alone would make him quite good for Dark Teams, um, just his active alone. But he's also a pretty good sub, deals a lot of damage, and carries a lot of skill boost. He's actually a pretty good leader skill, too. He's a 4 404, I mean, paired leaders. And for dark, and he has a one auto fool with at least four darks matched. So you match four darks, and you get all those multipliers, and you get a one auto fool. This is going to make him um, a great leader for like quick farming, because um, this is pretty good dark swipe farm. So dark blob, row, TPA, whatever flavor of dark you want to do, you're going to get big damage for just matching four dark orbs. The biggest problem is he doesn't have a shield. It's not insurmountable. You can you can build around teams that don't have shields. I mean, it's it's rough because you die to gravities and stuff, but it's it's still good. Like Feralay was good. She didn't have a shield. You just had to make sure that you brought a shield for going into Raphael for sure or one. Same thing. You'll have to bring some kind of shield to survive gravities. Now, um, one thing I really like about him is the other part of his leader skill I haven't discussed is that it's no Skyfall. So we already talked about he's potentially a good Dark Swipe leader. He comes with the no Skyfall. So those of us who haven't gotten our no Skyfall badge yet, 
Um, I'm at 29, so I still need one more. So I want this guy because I can do dark swipe with no skyfall built in. And um, I rave about this all the time. One of the best things to have with huge amounts of skyfall buffs is to actually have that no skyfall badge. Because if you skyfall your darks, let's say you skyfall four darks. If you skyfall four darks in a column, they're going to match. And then if you skyfall four more, they're going to match. And they're going to keep skyfalling and keep matching until you get at least one dark orb somewhere in the middle that breaks them up. Now, if you have the no skyfall badge on or you have a no skyfall leader skill, those four dark orbs will fall and they'll stay as four dark orbs. Meaning that with a no skyfall leader, you'll have an average of more dark orbs per board, guaranteed. So that you could do things like the triple uh, dark combo VDPs and stuff like that. Now, yeah, you, you have higher potential damage by skyfalling dark combos, but if you already hit damage cap anyway, why do you need to add more damage? You're already at damage cap. Why don't you just keep all those wonderful dark orbs you just skyfalled? All right, his Yuvo, same great active, uh, but he's packing up to sk six skill boosts. That seems to be a common thing now that we're seeing a lot of um, cards that have six skill boosts. Uh, his damage is more targeted towards machines, make, meaning he seems to be engineered towards Shura 1 a little bit more. And uh, I think people are going to find his base form typically more useful. His leader skill is very tanky, um, but it's combo based. And the multiplier is a little low, as you can see, 272.25. But, you know, 2.25 HP with a 75% shield, that's very tanky. And he gets plus 4 combo. Again, if you could stack enough passive awakenings, dark takiyakis, OEs, rows, and so on, that you're damage capping anyway, what do you care about your multiplier? Uh, you do need ten combo max to reach his or ten combo to reach his max multiplier, but that should be trivial because you're getting plus four combos from just matching four dark orbs, and you also get his seventy five percent shield just for matching four dark orbs. You gotta be a little careful not to over combo if you're trying to stall, but Normally, you know, you, you match your four dark orbs in the top. Bam. You've got a 75% shield. It's quite amazing. So, his assist equip. It's um, like four dark OEs and some stuff. It's a poverty nail. If you don't care about the orb effect built in the nail. Total pass. It's got locked orb skyfall on it as an active. Maybe locked orb skyfall will become more relevant in the future, but I can't think of any real relevance it has now, especially if you're not skyfalling hearts. Because maybe you're thinking, oh, I could skyfall locked dark orbs and that'll help me against Oni Kanushi and Alt Shura too. But, and you're still going to have to deal with a ton of mortal poison orbs and you don't have any hearts built in already. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to be terribly helpful. Yeah, so it's definitely like a poverty Nell equip. If you don't have Nell to get your five Dark OEs, this provides four Dark OEs on a single equip. All right. Um, Orb Skin. And this is the uh, last card. Yep, last card. So Orb Skin. Constance McGee. You get to buy this card. This card is pretty strong. And um, so it's guaranteed. Anyone can get it if they're willing to pay for it. Unique and strong leader skills means that you're paying money for potential fun, in my opinion. And so when the orb skin characters are fun, I'm more likely to buy them. Also, I like collecting the orb skins. It's also a solid sub and a solid assist equip. So, you know, a lot of people are calling her Green Horus. Even when Celica comes out, this card's going to still be good. And you can make an assist equip out of it. So again, it has a base. Uh, the it has a skill similar to Horus. It's going to enhance all green orbs. It's going to give you plus two seconds, and it's going to unlock the entire board. Um, you'll often see super reincarnated Horus played on off-color teams just because he provides so much utility in a single card. So if you're playing Nautico or some other type of green team, now you're on color. So it's good. Her leader skill is um, a four five hundred seventy-six four multiplier that's big 24x multiplier built onto her with a 43.75 percent shield and auto fua sounds quite amazing on pa paper but it actually it's presents quite a challenge because it is a heart cross lead some people despise cross leads so keep that in mind but at least it has auto fua it is a heart cross lead with auto fua meaning you don't have to have 10 orbs on the board to kill resolve floors so that's something to consider if you enjoy the heart cross meta or if 
there is a meta for it. But if you enjoy the heart cross play style, there you go. You actually have a leader that fits your play style now. You match that heart cross, bam. You got the auto fuel. That's fantastic. I, I'm super excited to play base constants. So I hope I have friends who are going to keep base constants and play it with me. So uh, Great Awakenings make her fit nicely into Nautico and NY Artemis team. She has those Takayakis. She provides two seconds of time extend, which time extend is premium on Nautico. Um, I think most of my teams I've built with Nautico sit around the 10 second mark. Um, normally that's plenty of time because of the plus combos, but if you're trying to do a very complicated VDP with spinners and blinds, it can get really confusing. And so time is a good thing to have. A lot of people run Juron just for all the time that he provides. Yuvo has the same active skill. Uh, the leader skill, interestingly enough, is immune to poison. Just out of nowhere. I don't know if there's some context that I'm not remembering that gives Constance McGee some immunity to poison. She has some good multipliers, 361 attack. She has an 84% shield and plus four combo. However, this is possibly the weirdest leader skill I've ever seen. It is all over the place and it's kind of exciting. Her plus combo is attached to making two wood combos. Her shield is attached to making seven plus combos and her attack multiplier is attached to making a wood combo and a heart combo. And then she's got immunity to poison. What is this leader skill? They're just like, let's just throw everything on the one leader skill. Make them all separate. So you have to remember, to do, if you want the full effect, which you don't necessarily need, you got to do two wood combos, you got to do a heart combo, and you have to hit seven plus combos to get everything. So it, it could get like confusing. What part of my leader skill am I trying to activate this turn to not die or to get the kill? Well, the hardest one is the shield, which you have to hit the seven plus combos. But luckily, that also means the shield is immune to orb troll. So combo, combo, combo. And combo leaders are fun. Some people just want to, you know, combo the whole board and get stuff. And, um, you know, the multiplier isn't gigantic, but 361 is serviceable. And uh, she has an 84% shield, so she's really tanky. But it's definitely a combo or die situation. You, you fail to get seven combos one time, you're dead. Uh, interestingly enough, even though it says you have to match two wood combos and wooden hearts to do everything, she's not limited to wood. You could run whatever you want on her. Uh, her awakenings are focused towards big VDP damage, and she has a very respectable attack stat to support that, so she's a good sub as well. Her assist. Two turn delay, 50x uh, attack poison, and 1.5 attack time and time on a single active. Pretty stacked active skill. The poison is mostly wasted. Not many times that you get to actually use a poison and take advantage of it, but hey, it might come up. And you can completely remove uh, the poison and it's still a good active. It's on a fair 13 turn cooldown, maybe a little high, but um, you know, two turn delay, attack and RSV, like I was, or not RSV time. Like I was saying, uh, when you're doing Alt Shore 2 team building, sometimes those weirdly stacked actives are quite good for sure too because you don't have space anyway you might as well have the active stacked uh provides three green oes one sbr and binary resist overall very useful assist equip that will likely find its way onto all onto not all but many meta green teams am i going to roll in fujimi uh today since it's one in the morning my time right now yeah i'm i'm rolling for bontakun i missed sosuke last time and um I rolled pretty heavily, so I can't say I regret not getting him because I tried to get him. I'm going to hopefully get him this time. I would like to roll Naga, and I really, really want to roll the new Testarossa. Great card. Super exciting to to play some of these new cards because they look fun. They're not all going to be Shura 2 capable, but almost everything's Shura 1 capable now at this point because subs carry everything. So do I think you should roll in it? Yeah. I think in general, you should at least throw a couple rolls at it. If you're a whale, you're probably going to roll anyway. If you've never rolled in it, it's worth a couple rolls for sure. It's not going to be as meta as Monogatari. It's not going to be as crazy off the wall powerful because it was two months into the future. That was um, Monster Hunter collab. But I think it's still great. Anyway, that's my opinions. Take them with a grain of salt. I just thought I would give some people a quick guide on whether they should roll or not and what to look forward to with the seven stars and uh, other diamonds. Have a great night. We're done. That was it. Yeah, bye YouTube. See ya.
yeah, haha. Uh, Monster Hunter was insane because 